Hey guys, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. Um, I was sick. I couldn't get Caden live to work correctly. Um, but I'm back. Uh, I might, I, I'm still a little sick, yes, after almost a month. Uh, so I might cough and not notice. I might, uh, I might even do the dreaded sniff. But, um, I'm back, and I wanted to show you something I've been working on called LERP and the LUR. Um, basically, I'm getting kind of tired of the fact that Arch doesn't, um, like, Caden Life doesn't work on Arch, for example, very well. Like, even now, I'm not going to be able to do smooth transitions into my videos or anything like that right now. I'm thinking of moving to something like Fedora, maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm even, like, mesmerized by something as complicated as Void, where, like, I have to set up NTP and stuff like that, so you never know what's going to go wrong on Void, but it's kind of captivating. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'll do, but Arch is not really for me. I... Um, I did have a good time on Manjaro, but I don't want to use that. But basically, LERP is a program I made that can access the LUR. Now, the LUR is another thing I made um, right here. It's yeah, it's, um, there's really only one legit package in here right now, but, um, it, uh, yeah, l let me just show you. So, if I do just, uh, so I actually added, um, so, okay, let, let me explain. So, Lerp, uh, creates this, uh, directory dot lur and this actually has your app entries so it has um i need to fix i i didn't understand what cpan was so i thought it was a dependency but um uh the so the desktop entry lists all the binaries involved, the version, description, author. I'm not the original author of ASCII Aquarium. I just uploaded it to the standard LUR. Uh, desktop entry, dependencies. Also, you can add additional repositories with the repo file and this is your configuration settings, which you can also access by uh, typing in uh, lerp, lerp configure, and it will actually, if you don't specify anything after that, it will open whatever is in um, your environment variable for editor so I set mine to vim so it's opening that um, but if you specify for example I've got mousepad on the system it opens it up in mousepad but I like vim so let's do vim um, so it has use official repositories so that means use the official repositories that are actually specified in the program. That is so I can just update the links and whatnot. Use official proprietary repositories. By default, I set this to false because, uh, you know, I'm a big open source guy. I, I do use Discord, but I have to use Discord for some things. Um... Use, so yeah, use official repositories, true, proprietary, no. Use partner repositories. This is like if, if for example, I have ASCII Aquarium, 
Um, if I have ASCII Aquarium on the LUR, but the actual developer of ASCII Aquarium is like, hey dude, I'm the developer of ASCII Aquarium. Is it okay if I make an LUR repository and you put it in the program? And that's where I'd go. Use partner repositories. Use repo file repositories. These are basically repo repositories you add on your own. Um, use native package manager. Uh, I mean, guess native package manager. This basically, when I'm installing dependencies with the native package manager, what this is, is it will um, basically, uh, so I have this other setting here, guess distro family. I wrote a function in my code that reads the slash etsy slash os release because those files in pretty much all distributions um, they have an id value and then some of them have an id like value so things like arch, fedora, ubuntu those are mainstream um, those are the mainstream uh, Debian, like those are the grandfathers, uh, so those don't have an I. Debian, Fedora, and Arch don't have an ID like value, but they have an ID value, which is self explanatory Debian, Fedora, Arch. Here, I, I can actually just show you. So if I, um, if I cat my Etsy OS release, you can see that there's ID, which shows the actual OS, like the spin, then ID like, which is what is really useful because it shows what it's based off of. So what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to read ID like first, but if that fails, I'll read ID. And um, since the ID like isn't always consistent, like Ubuntu writes it as Debian, but Pop OS writes it as Debian Ubuntu, it's really weird. Um, what I do is instead of seeing if it's exactly matching, I see if if ID like or ID, it, it all gets pounded down into one variable. I'll call that variable value because uh, it contains either one of these depending on which one to use. If value contains a substring of Debian return Debian, if so the function will return Debian. If it contains Fedora, return Fedora. If it contains Arch, return Arch. Same with things like Gentoo, SUSE, Void, um, it's actually a very straightforward process. But um, then we've also got, so le let me open up settings again. No, not that. Um, so what guest native package manager does is um, it uses it gets the distribution and then I have another function guest native package manager which basically matches like if the distro family is arch return pacman if it's debian return apt if it's fedora return <laughs> return dnf if it's void return xbps if it's um if it's SUSE, return um, zipper. It's self-explanatory as well. It's actually very simple. Um, now, if you set this to false, so it don't, so it doesn't guess the native package manager. You'll have to set it yourself, and you could write apt here, dnf here, like whatever you want. Um, whatever this would normally return. 
but you can also write custom here. And then here you would have to specify the package manager format. So the way you would do that is, for example, say you're using Paru, uh, which I am. I stopped using yay because Paru is A, written in my favorite coding language, Rust, and B, it is actually very nice. So what you would do, so say, so you install programs with Paru-S and then, for example, the program, I can remove it with RNS and I can update the computer with SYYU. Um, so what I would do is write these pipes, and then I would put in dash s, dash r n s, uh, and these are separated by colons, and dash s y y u. And then I would put pkg goes here. And that's how you specify a custom uh, package manager format. It is a bit limited. Because from my testing, well, actually I haven't tested this specifically, but from the logic of my code, you have to have the operator before the actual packages. Um, and uh, don't add more than one PKG goes here. Just one operator list and just one PKG goes here. I might add a function later on to tell if the package manager, the native package manager, supports multi-packages. But I don't think that'd make a difference anyway. Same with here. If you um, turn off guest distro family, you have to specify the distro family yourself. So you could write arch here, void here, um, susa here, just whatever this would normally return. Um, and then, uh, in the bin, this is where your actual binaries are. Um, so actually I can, so yeah, what I would do is, um, if you want to run these natively, so there is a command to run these and it is lerp run and then the binary. The, the binary, but um, if you don't want to do that, what you can do is sudo whatever text editor you want to use, vim, yeah, that, uh, I don't know why people think that's cringy to do sudo vim, but whatever, and then you do slash etsy slash environment, so sudo vim slash etsy slash environment, uh, and then you type in your password, and then um, you write all in caps, path equals and then not in caps because it's a directory and then whatever directory so slash home slash your username slash dot lur so l u r slash bin um, and then you write a colon and then all in caps again dollar sign path and th what that will do is allow you to add this to your path variable. Um, yeah. So after you've got that, you need to reboot the computer, but it's um, now I can. So I actually, uh, let me demonstrate. I can remove dotler because I have nothing valuable in it, but um, I can demonstrate. So I do not have ASCII Aquarium installed with Pac-Man. Also, that other binary you may have seen. Example, that's for testing. But um, I can do lerp install. Let me install example pkg just to show you the example binary. And it will install it. Oh, right. Ignore ignore this this is um an issue I need to fix um, I think I know how to fix this I may not have mentioned but lerp is not really ready for the c consumers yet it's um, 
still in somewhat early development. I only really have the basics down, and even then, uh, as you can see here, some of them are breaking for odd reasons. Um, but yeah. Now, I should have example. Yeah. So it did in, it did install example. But now let me type in lerp install ASCII Aquarium. And I do have pre-install sh and post-install sh support too, so you can write scripts. Um, I'm also planning to write uh, pre-install and post-install scripts that also run only for a specific architecture. And maybe also for a specific, um, for a specific um, distro family. So as you can see, it also parses the package info, and I'll show you this later, like how to package things for the LUR. So PKG name, ASCII Aquarium, that's like the name for the entry version. Uh, the, this version cannot be a custom version. This is not the package version. This is the LUR version. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has to be integers. Um, description. This is just the description. I don't really have a use for that right now. But just put one there if you're packaging. Author. Claudio Matsuoka. That is the creator of ASCII Aquarium. No desktop entry, so desktop entry, no. Um, all architecture support, yes. Um, info parsed, so it basically, uh, so it collects the package with a function I wrote called smart download, which basically uses another function, download, but it loops through all the repositories instead of you manually having to specify. And download actually returns true or false depending on if it was successful or not. And what smart download does is it it's persistent until it was successfully downloaded. Um, so it does all that. And then after it parses the info, it just moves the binaries, checks the architecture. Um, yeah. And then done moving binaries, installing dependencies. There appears to be no depend dependencies needed. Now this actually runs twice in a regular for loop. Um, so it checks first for the dependencies underscore arch file. Now on Ubuntu, there is actually, like on Debian Ubuntu, there is actually a dependencies underscore Debian file. So this would actually trigger something if you were on Debian or Ubuntu. Now it will install dependencies for all distros because there's also dependencies underscore all. Reading dependencies, proceeding to installation of dependencies, installing dependency cpan. I have to remove that. Um, failed to install dependency cpan. Yeah, because I realized later it's not a real package. Uh, done installing dependencies. Creating entry for new program ASCII Aquarium. Attempting to run post install.sh. And this just runs a cpan command because I figured out in order for ASCII Aquarium to actually work, you have to run cpan. Um, now, now you'll get this message if you're installing ASCII Aquarium because of the post install script. Hello. I'm Jackson Novak, that's me. I, I just want you to know that I uploaded ASCII Aquarium to the standard LUR as a third party. Here's the actual creator's GitHub repo for ASCII Aquarium. And I just gave the link. Anyway, have a nice day. Hope you enjoy my LUR. I own the standard LUR. And see ya. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward. And I can even prove by up arrowing that I didn't lie to you. So this a moment uh, ago was red, was red signifying ASCII Aquarium didn't exist. Now let me run it. And there's ASCII Aquarium.
uh, and the pretty little fishies. But yeah, uh, pretty simple. There's other programs I want to compile, mainly like, uh, cause I compiled ASCII Aquarium kind of as a test because it has at least one dependency. So I was testing dependencies with it. Also, it's not available on Ubuntu. That's also why I put it in the standard LUR. Um, and then I, I think only TT, uh, there is better lock screen, which I think you can only get through the AUR right now or compiling from source, so I want to put that in the standard LUR. Um, I think TDY, TTY clock also um, is only in the LUR. Um, also, just a side note, if you're installing TTY clock from the LUR, um, don't do yay dash s uh, I actually have yay bound to Paru, but I have muscle memory, so so don't do yay dash s t t y clock or like whatever you use for your a u r helper, cause that actually doesn't work. And I hope the a u r guys notice that. You actually have to do t t y clock, uh, t t y dash clock dash get. This fixes the issue. It even says in the l u r that it fixes the issue. Um, with building. One other thing. Ah, yes, you can also remove programs. So I can remove... Oh, did I remove example already? Oh, there's just no desktop entry. Well, I also have lerp clean. That's another command. So that reads all the entries and removes any orphaned binaries. Uh, so yeah, now example is missing. Um, ask Aquarium. As you can see, that was blue and it worked. Now let me do lerp remove ASCII Aquarium. That uninstalls it. Now let me up arrow back to ask Aquarium. As you can see, it um uninstalls it. Now I do want ASCII Aquarium because it's such an awesome program. So I'm going to install it again. There we go. Now, um, so if I type in lerp help, you can see all the commands all the commands. So there's help, install, remove, upgrade, and upgrade specific don't do anything yet because I still have to code those functions, which I'm dreading. Those are probably going to be the hardest to code, actually. Um, and I've done some pretty hard stuff in this project. Repo file, that prints out the location of your repo file. In case, for example, like if I do repo file, so lerp repo file. I can do something a little like this, some scripting, where this basically takes the return value and I can say vim, for example. And then when I do that, it opens up the repo file which currently is empty. Um, there's generate repo file, gen repo file, that just overwrites your current one and generates a new repo file, so um, gen repo file, and it will warn you, and you can um, say no, or say yes, um, and then there is configure. And I already showed you that. And there is actually this download command. I can show you that. So let me open up Thunar and go to my downloads. Um, and I don't need any of this. So let me run the download command. And what install actually is, is it's just downloading the package. So 
install is literally just a function with a bit of extra fluff on it that literally just runs two functions. It runs the smart download function, which downloads the file and does it automatically with repos and stuff, sorts that out. And then the, and then it runs um, install from package command, um, which just installs it from a which installs a program from a pre-downloaded package. And I actually added that into the commands. Now I have to change offline install to install from package because it does try and install dependencies from the package manager. But um, yeah, let me run lerp download ASCII Aquarium downloads, for example. What this will do is it will download the actual package here. Now I can run, so do I have ASCII Aquarium on the system? Yes, I do. So let me run lerp remove ASCII Aquarium. So ASCII Aquarium um, is no longer on here. Now I can run lerp offline install. I'm hoping to change that to install from file or install from package. Um, lerp offline install downloads. Uh, that's where I kept it and the package. And it will uh, install it. And it copies the package um, to it copies the package to um, the cache directory. I used to have it move it, but then I realized what if people want to archive this package or whatever. So yeah. Um, now ASCII Aquarium should be successfully installed. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Um, I'll remove it for now, just to surprise myself, I guess. Um, now what else do we have? We have path. This basically just, um, it's another thing kind of for scripting, I guess. So I can, um, so I can do lerp path. And that just prints the path to the binaries. Offline install, that, that's what I showed you. Clean, I showed you already. Run, I'm pretty sure I showed you already. That just That's just if you didn't add the bin directory to your path, you can run them with uh, lerp. And I have an alias that is lr, which is just lerp run. Um, add to path. This just, um, since I can't actually add to path with lerp, this just um, prints out what command you would run in the terminal to temporarily add it to your path variable. Of course, this is only for the terminal. This is like something you'd put in your bash rc, so it'd run every time you open a new terminal. Of course, I'm using fish, and I'm considering using new shell. Um, yeah, so uh, there's path, and then there's offline install, which you saw, clean, run, add to path. Version. Um, this basically just, so actually I need to install ASCII Aquarium again, I think, for this. Uh, quit. So I can type in lerp version ASCII Aquarium and it returns the version kind of in a scripting format. Um, and then I can open up help again. So version config, this is different from configuration. If I run lerp config, it prints out the location of the configuration file. And then there's gen config, which is kind of the same as, so config and gen config are the same as repo file and gen repo file, but for the configuration file. So if I say gen config, 
it's pretty much the exact same. I actually had Gen Repo file open on the side for reference, so it's pretty much the same. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, okay, so config gen config, the only command left, which is the most featureful command left, is tool. This is my newest command. My newest commands always end up on the bottom of the list. So yeah, um, lerp tool. What this is, is you can specify a subcommand for scripting. So if I do, oh, and before I go down this, one last thing I should mention is you can actually do lerp help or you can do lerp help and then a list of commands you want to see help on. So install help tool, for example, and it prints out a description for each one. The lerp tool help command is not nearly that advanced, it just prints out all the commands. So lerp tool, um, it wants me to specify a tool command. So if I type lerp tool help, it prints out all the commands. So help, error, warn, info, arrow info, arch. That basically just uses um, inbuilt functions in lerp for like for your post install script for example if you want to print a warning or an info or, or an error in the native format of lerp for example so if i write lerp tool error and then whatever so like this will spit an error um but it's not what i want so if i write um your cat is missing again. That is a crime, because I love cats. Um, if I do that, it prints an error. Now I can do um, your cat is looking out an open window get up from the TV uh, just some silly examples so um, now I can change this to warn and it will print a warning and then we could also type in your cat is very cute and we could type in um, uh, and we could type in info. Your cat is very cute. Um, we could also type in info. You currently own. You currently own, and then I'll chain this on. To another command, lerp uh, tool arrow info, uh, and then we could say four, no, four dollars, and it should write that, but oh, I see what I did, four dollars, I guess, yeah, there we go. So if I run that again, it prints that arrow, because that's another function. So if I type in lerp tool help, um, we also have arch. This basically just prints the architecture of the system. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Now I should show you how to actually make an LUR package. So what I'll do is I'll actually download the example package to um, the downloads folder. And I'll probably have an automated tool to help with this too. Um, but um, so example, so I'll download the example. 
All right, that's downloaded. Thunar. Um. Dang it. Uh. So. Uh. Let me just extract this with tar real quick. There. And I'll remove the actual tar file. Okay, so, um, what is this? So you've got a folder with the, with the raw name of the architecture that's, like, literally the exact same as what uh, Tool Arch spits out. So Tool is also kind of a debugging thing, I guess. So x86 underscore 64. That's for, well, self-explanatory, those systems. Now, I can also show you, um, maybe, uh, actually, I don't need to, but there are other options. You can put an in info.lurc, and what the those are is, like, support all architectures. Um, what that means is if it, uh, so... If that's the case, and you'd instead of putting an architecture folder, you would just put a folder called Arch All, and those would hold binaries for any system. Um, so yeah, uh, and then you have your post install and pre install scripts. Uh, these basically just run command. So pre install runs a command before. It attempts to actually do the installing. Um, post install runs a command after the actual installing. Um, and then you're in your info.lurc, which I want to open with vim. So vim info. Um, let me blow this up. How do you blow stuff up? And oh, ah, there we go. So, um, you have the package name. This is like, so you, you would actually do lure install example dash pkg, but to uninstall it, you would do whatever's in here. Um, this is the version. This is the description. I'm the author of the package. No desktop entry. And... There's other things that can go in here too, like dependencies underscore Debian, dependencies underscore Arch, uh, whatever whatever distro family would spit out. So I might add that to tool as well. Um, and yeah, so once you have your structure set up, what you would do is go to the directory in the terminal or whatever, whatever you want to use. I recommend the terminal. And you would type in tar CVF. So this stands for create verbose. So you don't have to have F, but I like it in case there's an error. So tar CVF. So create verbose file. Now you specify the file. Um, I'm going to specify ascii.tar. That's what I want the output to be. And then I want to put a star. This means all files in the directory. Um, th those are the files I want to compress. So when I type that, it will make this. Now what you want to do is type in gzip and then that tar file. Um, now once you have that, you can uh, put this Oh wait, this is not the ASCII Aquarium package, it's the example package. Uh, my bad. So, example pkg. This would be a valid LUR package now. So yeah, that's... And I'll, I'll put all of this in the wiki, because there is a wiki on the LUR. I'll have the repository for, uh, for LERP. Um, in the description because I stopped using GitHub because it's proprietary and I started using Codeberg because it's open source. Open source. Um, 
So the wiki is over here. Um, and yeah, it's a very sm it's a very small wiki right now. But um, it yeah. Uh, again, this is not meant for consumer use yet. Um, very soon it will be, though. Now, I think one other thing I should show you before I go is, um, if I cat the main function file for this. Oh, by the way, this file is really long. Um, it's like 1600 lines already but um if I cat this file again um the way you would add a repository is instead of um writing so oh sorry so instead of writing the repository URL like how you would clone it but without dot git on the end you actually have to write in Codeberg's case raw branch main. This is because so you can actually test this if you're adding a repository. If it's a GitHub repository, for example, what you want to add is what you add in wget. So the wget command. This is what you would add before a slash and then the package you want to download. So don't put a slash on the end. Um, so before the package you want to download. So if I wanted to download example, um, it would try and download it from https colon slash slash codeberg dot org slash oglo 12 slash standard dash lur slash raw slash branch slash main slash example um, dash pkg dot tar dot gz. So it try and ins it try and uh, download that with wget. If you don't specify it like that, it won't work. Um, so yeah, there's the proprietary official lur. I only added proprietary support so people would be happy who actually use garbage. Um, but yeah, uh, ignore that. So, the official LURs, proprietary LURs, partner LURs, um, empty for now. I'm kind of sad about that. If you want to maintain your own LUR, go ahead and hook me up and I'll, uh, probably put it here. Um... And I can also show you actually how to make an LUR, or at least how one is structured. So here are the default configurations. So yeah, um, one code. There's also more code in other function files, uh, in other files that end in .rs and that. But um, let me actually visit the LUR, the standard LUR for for a sec. Um, so how this works is you have all your .tar.gz packages just here in the same directory. You can't really have subdirectories yet. I don't, I mean you probably can if you specify the subdirectory slash the package name um, in the install so you put a slash. Um, but what you want to do is in that repo, along with all the packages, you also want to have a repo.lurc. LURC, so lurk, is the configuration language I wrote for lurp and for the LUR. So it's a, it's a standalone R RS file. If you want to write your own package manager for the LUR, you can just copy, if you're using REST, you can literally just copy and paste the um, lur.rs, uh, the lurc.rs file into your package manager, and it will work. I designed it like that. 
So in the L so in repo.lur, you want to specify the name. You you want to specify the name of the repository. Uh, so kind of like the title, and then the owner. That's it so far. So uh, yeah, once you have that, you're free to put in packages. It's pretty simple, actually very simple. And if you're using Codeberg, you already know that you would need to change this SRC to raw if you're in this long um, long URL. So yeah, that's uh. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, I would appreciate if you uh, subscribed, I believe. Let me just check real quick. Um, oh, jeez, my feed is garbage. Except for that one, that's cool. Um, except for the fact that it's Windows 95. But if I go to my channel... Uh, yes, I have almost 50 subscribers. So 47 subscribers. Please subscribe. Please. I would love it if you did. Um, I'm also on Odyssey. I'm going to update my Odyssey profile picture to match my YouTube profile picture. But currently on Odyssey, um, this is me. This is me on Odyssey. After this video, it might still look like this, but it might also be my little folder icon thing. So follow me on Odyssey, please. Uh, leave a like, ring the bell on YouTube and Odyssey. Uh, so on Odyssey, you would leave a fire symbol, meaning, yeah, this video is good. Uh, if you don't like the video, leave, um, leave a dislike. Tell me why in the comments. If you like the video, just leave a comment telling me what you specifically liked. Same on Odyssey. Uh, fire and splat. Splat meaning dislike, fire meaning like. Um, and that's about it. I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye. And see ya.